true, without falsehood, certain, and most true. What is below is like what is above, and what is above is like what is below. To accomplish the miracles of one thing, and as all things were derived from one by the meditation of one, so all things are born from this one thing by adaptation. One is all; all is one. Let's represent this philosophical idea of unity more concretely, and see where logic can take us. Psi. This is the mathematical representation of any system of interest, vector of unit length sitting at the origin. The system can be anything: an electron, a quark, a carbon atom, water molecule, elephant, planet, and everything else. We refer to this vector as the state vector, or simply as state. In the rest of this video, now imagine putting any object in motion. For example, an apple falling from a tree. The apple has velocity when it moves, and its position is changing as it moves forward in time with us. Let's call the properties that are associated with moving objects dynamical properties. These measurable quantities are called observables by the physicists, but it is kind of a bad name because the act of measurement is an active process, and observing. Is rather passive. Personally, I think a more suitable name is measurables. Different dynamical state must be labeled differently because these labels indicate the property of the state. State has no intrinsic label as it is just a unit vector. However, this is an easy fix. Simply stretch the state by the value of the dynamical property. To encode this information into the length of the state vector, however, it is tedious if we label these states every time we encounter one. So the clever solution is to pack all the labeled states into a set. So I have this database of dynamical properties. So every time we want to find out the dynamical property of a state, we simply compare the unknown state to our predetermined set of labeled states. Only states that belong to the set. With a labeled copy of itself, extracts the dynamical property. Suppose we have a set of measurable dynamical property tau, where tau is completely arbitrary and it can be anything. Tau in angular bracket is the state of the system having the specific amount of tau property. Tau outside the angular bracket labels the state by stretching the state vector. The state can have different values of tau, like a system can have different energy. Or at different location. Therefore, we have an entire set of labeled state. Let's denote the set in curly bracket and write down a generic object inside the bracket. Equivalently, let's put a hat on tau to abbreviate the set of labeled states. So the information extraction process looks something like this: state tau picks out its value from the set, which is tau, provided that if it belongs to the set of tau hat. These dynamical properties governs the dynamics of the system. Thus, extraction of this piece of information is the key to evolve our system with respect to some parameter. For now, let's just call it theta. With this in mind, and using the piece of information we have, which is the length of the state, let's now try to evolve the system. An important rule must be obeyed is that physical systems are always represented by a state vector. Of unit length located at origin, state vector of different length must not represent the system. The second important rule is the evolution of the system is continuous, and this must be reflected in our representation. This means the movement of the state vector must be continuous. Physically, we cannot have a particle that teleports from one place to another. The third rule is that our state vector must evolve when the system evolves. In other words, you cannot have a state vector that is completely stationary. Let's put a new vector on the tip of the state vector to help us to see how the state can evolve. Let's call this new vector dragger because it drags our state vector. Now we'll play around by changing the dragger and see how the state vector moves. The state vector lies on a number line, and it is very much stuck. There's no way of changing the state without breaking any of the three rules. Continuous movement changes the length.
and movement preserves length is rapid reflection back and forth between negative one and one, and this is obviously non-continuous. Doing nothing at all will break rule three, because the state cannot be completely stationary. Turns out these three rules are very severe constraints, so severe that no operation on the number line can fulfill all three rules simultaneously. So we run out of numbers to use, as every number lies on the number line. We will now invent a new number, completely new, and cannot be expressed as anything on the number line. Therefore, it is perpendicular to the number line. This new number is the square root of minus one. Let's call this number i. When we multiply our state vector tau with i, the state becomes perpendicular to the original state. Let's make this new vector the dragger. And see how it evolves the state vector. This new number can create an entirely new number line by adding or subtracting itself as many times as it likes. We now have two number lines perpendicular to each other. Therefore, we have a plane of numbers. This means the state vector has another dimension of freedom to move around, and this is exactly what we need to evolve the state vector with our newly found dimension. We're able to orientate the dragger so that it is perpendicular to the state vector. This causes the state to rotate anti-clockwise about the origin. Now you can check this rotation fulfills all three rules. It doesn't change the length of the state vector. It is continuous, and it is obviously changing the state. We still haven't used our dynamical information we extracted previously yet, so let's use it now. Even though rotation fulfills all three rules. The movement is still very restricted. The only freedom the state vector has is the direction and the speed of rotation. So we can only input this dynamical information into either the speed or direction or both. The way to input this information is to impose positive value of dynamical property corresponds to clockwise rotation. Negative value corresponds to anti-clockwise rotation. And small value corresponds to slow rotation. Large value corresponds to fast rotation. Let's write down an equation to summarize everything we discovered. The curly D, which we call partial, And subscript theta means the rate of change with respect to theta. Our dragger tells the state vector how to change, so it has to have this curly d symbol. Tau is the value of the dynamical property, which is a real number, because we can measure them. Because it doesn't make sense for us to measure an imaginary amount of some quantity. Therefore, the dragger is the original state vector scaled by number tau and multiplied by i. So it is perpendicular to the original state vector. We need a minus sign because we said the positive value of tau corresponds to clockwise rotation. We can get rid of this pesky minus sign by multiplying by i on both sides, as i squared is minus one, and minus and minus cancels out with each other. We now have this equation. It is also convenient to pull out the partial theta out of the angular bracket, so we can get a relationship. Purely between state vector in terms of itself, so we can solve this equation in future. And in future, I mean the next video. Looks like we have an equation governing the dynamics of the system, but actually we don't. The state vector representing our physical system is psi, not tau. We want psi, not tau. We avoided psi because it is easy for tau to extract information from operator. Tau. We will never be lucky enough to meet one of these state taus. Turns out, the truth we're seeking is a bit more complicated than what we have already discovered. Even though psi is not a member of the set of tau, state psi can be decomposed into many state taus, sometimes infinitely many taus. Then, because all the state tau are members of the set, they can all extract the value of their own dynamical properties. Then, because we know how to evolve individual tau state, we can therefore evolve any generic state psi. So here's how we fix our equation. 
we replace state tau with state psi because that is what we are interested in. Then we put the hat back onto tau to denote it is now an operator and contains all the information needed to evolve the system. The fact that the state psi, we found it a little bit tricky to extract the values because it doesn't belong in the set of tau. It's not exactly our concern. All we need to know is that if tau hat knows how to evolve every single tau state, then tau hat knows how to evolve state psi. We must believe in tau hat. Tau with a hat is very powerful and we shouldn't doubt its ability to evolve any system with respect to some unknown parameter theta. The geometric interpretation is quite interesting. State tau lives in two real dimensions or one complex dimension. State psi lives in n dimensions where n can be infinity when it can be decomposed into infinitely many tau states. State tau rotates on a circle, but state psi moves on an n-dimensional sphere. However, the key thing is that the dragger is always perpendicular to the state, no matter how many dimensions. The dragger in a sense generates all other possible states that represent our system via infinitely many, infinitely small changes of the state. Back to the equation we found that governs the dynamics of our system. I partial theta psi equals to tau hat psi. This is an extremely important result if you haven't realized it yet. It states some measurable dynamical property tau evolves the system with respect to some parameter theta. Tau is called the generator for this reason. The pair of generator and the parameter is determined by symmetry. Noether's theorem states the symmetry. Some people say Noether's theorem is the most beautiful and powerful result in modern day theoretical physics as it gives rise to conservation laws. The details behind it is beyond the scope of this video, so we'll simply state the results. System being invariant under spatial translation leads to conservation of momentum. Therefore, momentum P is the generator of spatial translation. Parameter is distance A. System being invariant under rotation leads to conservation of angular momentum. Therefore, angular momentum L is the generator of rotation. Parameter is angle alpha. System being invariant under time evolution leads to conservation of energy. Therefore, energy, H, is the generator of time evolution. Parameter is time, T. Therefore, the celebrated Schrödinger equation is just a special case of this master equation. Schrödinger equation is conceptually Newton's second law in quantum mechanics. We have generalized Schrödinger equation and found something even more powerful. Lastly, I want to point out the final symmetry of the equation. The state represents the idea of one, whether it is unit length or it traces out the unit circle or n-dimensional unit sphere when it evolves. But the state always represents all as it is the mathematical representation of the entire system. So the sentence one is all, all is one doesn't sound as nonsense as it is at the start of the video. This is the symmetry of identity as the state is the element of identity, the symmetry obtained from doing nothing at all. Mathematically, the state is the one and only element of what is known as a trivial group. The trivial group serves as the zero object in the category of groups in group theory, meaning it is both an initial object and a terminal object, which is also where I terminate this video. Thanks for watching.